In the Western world, there is the poison of feminism. Now the question is, you're going to bump into people throughout your life that will be brainwashed by this. Can you help them? Can you lead them out of it? Or is it best to just cut them off? When it comes to dating, can you lead a woman out of feminism? Or is it best to just find a woman who already is not into feminism? What about family and relatives that are also brainwashed? Can you help them? Or should you leave them to their own misery? Well, these are the questions that I'm going to be covering in today's video. And this topic was actually requested to me by one of my clients who's in my relationship mastery course. And this is coming from him. He wanted me to make a video on this topic. So without a further ado, that is what we're going to do. So if you're a guy who is single and you're looking to date a woman and you're coming across women that perhaps are very masculine or career oriented, you don't know how to handle that or you're dealing with drama at home, family, friends, people you know close to you that are feminists, though well, this video is gonna help you call them out, help change their mind if they're willing to listen. I'm gonna break the whole thing down. I'm also gonna link down below the other video videos I have made on the channel about feminism that I recommend you watch if you haven't already, and they will also show up on the end screen, okay? So, Let's start with the first question. Again, this video was requested by a client of mine. Can you make a video on how to explain to a woman who has been influenced by society that she should make a career and deny a femininity and that it is weird to become a mother at a young age? How do you explain to her that it is wrong to do that and why that lifestyle of making a career will make her unhappy? For me personally, I find it difficult to explain to a woman why it will make her unhappy. Let's say she actually wants a traditional lifestyle, but has denied it because everyone says it's weird to do so, or she has no other red flags but just this one that she wants a career. How do you explain to her that she's being scammed by society? Well, this is first of all what I would say to you and to any guy dealing with this. If, the, if you're meeting women in real life, you're approaching them, you meet them at work, at college, at university, if you're young, you meet them on a night out, or you're matching on dating apps or through social media, and you're having these conversations and you're finding it difficult to explain to her why feminism is wrong, you're either dealing with women that are not that into you or she's too brainwashed and there's nothing you can do about it. The third option is you actually may not know how to communicate properly, which is what I'm going to also cover by the answers I'm going to be giving you in the video. So there is, and I want to get this out of the way first of all. Guys, there is nothing wrong if you meet a girl and she's working. Okay, a lot of men... Traditional men want a woman who does the traditional role. She stays home, she's going to stay home with the kids and marry you and do the wifely duties. What a lot of you guys don't understand is this naturally happens if there's chemistry and compatibility. If you are each other's type, you both want marriage, you both want family. I mean, and she really thinks and feels like she's a lucky woman to have you and you feel lucky to have her, it's mutual. Well, guess what? naturally she's going to want to marry you she's going to want to have a family and she's going to do the feminine things so oftentimes this isn't even a feminist thing it's a i've settled for you think or you're not really the guy that i want because even when you look at the masculine feminist women when they get with these weak feminine guys or men they're really not that into it fizzles out they lose the spark they stop making an effort this is why you hear stories of guys that have been with a girl for five years, ten years. They're trying to marry her and she doesn't want to marry him. And she doesn't want kids, but then they break up. And within six months to a year, she's engaged and married to another guy. And the ex looks back and thinks, why is she married to him? The answer is, she settled for you, but she found the right guy afterwards. She found a man she really wanted. And because she really wanted him, it mattered enough for her to consider marriage and family with him. And that's reality. 
I've had guys, male clients, they've been with a girl for years and they don't want to marry her. They don't want to commit to her or have kids. But when they walk away, heal, they find another girl that is their type. Now they have stronger values because they know what they're looking for in a woman. They want to marry her. They want to commit to her. It's the same thing. And a lot of it has to do with all of this. When you find a woman and you have to try and change or fix her, it's probably usually not that there's something wrong with her. It's just that she's not for you. So back to this question. If she's career oriented. Now, if you watch my video on debunking feminism, if you go to the YouTube channel, where is it? Feminism is from the devil, right? I mentioned it there as well. Like, if she has a job, it's not a bad thing. It's the intention behind the job. It's if she's career oriented to the point where she says she's independent, she doesn't need a man, she can do her own thing, she'll prioritize having a family later on in life, then it's a problem. But the reality is, gentlemen, you have to ask her these three questions. Okay? When you talk with a girl, ask her your job. What is your reason for doing your job? Because if she says she dates to marry, or she's traditional, but she wants to be career oriented, then she's probably not that into you. Or there's something else wrong with her. Because if she is traditional, as she claims, then she finds a guy she likes, she doesn't really care about a job, she gets married, she takes care of the kids, and she lives a peaceful life with you. If, and she'll happily live within her husband's means, as traditional women do. But if she's not willing to do that for you, then you're probably not the right guy for her. So ask yourself, question number one, is she just working to survive? What do I mean by this? Let me highlight it as I'm going through it. Guys, not every woman comes from a family where the dad makes good money and the dad makes so much that the wife doesn't have to work and all the kids, doesn't matter how many kids he has, there's an inheritance to take care of them all and the daughters can traditionally, as they used to, wait home, they find a guy, they marry and they move in with him and that's that. That's not the case anymore. Most fathers are feminist because they're raised in, from the 1960s when feminism first came out, they've been slowly raised on that slow burner of feminism. And a lot of fathers don't distinguish the role, the different roles between men and women, even though they may do things traditionally. So in their mind, they follow societal norm and push their daughters to get a career, get a job, go down the masculine route. Now here's the difference. Sometimes family may pressure the girl to be career oriented. Sometimes the girl, the only reason she gets a job is because she comes from a broken home or a family where there's, they're poor, they don't have a lot of money. So she has no choice but to survive and make money. Or the family is so dysfunctional, she needs to move out and get away from the family. So she gets herself a job, she gets a career to take care of herself. She, does, she has no one to take care of her. That's not stupid, that's smart. That's the best thing she should do. So a lot of you guys, if you hear a woman's getting college, degree, career, and you're Christian, you might look at this and always think it's bad. Well, he, you need to hear me out on this. Is she just working to survive? Because a job is just to pay the bills. And if you ask most women, they're not feminists. They might have some residue because they're raised in the system, but a lot of, especially for you guys in your early 20s, a lot of the younger women now, they're seeing how bad feminism is. And when you put them around the right guy, they, they don't care about that feminism. They want to be taken care of. They want marriage. They want family. They want kids. But a lot of women are in the same boat that men are at. Where are the good men? I can't find a good man. So what do they do? They're not going to sit there at home and do nothing. They're going to work. They're going to get a job. They're going to make some money for themselves. So if they don't find a guy, at least they can live. It's common sense, right? So a lot of the girls you meet are just going to be working a job to survive. And this is something you want to address. So when you match with a girl on a dating app or you meet her in person, I would address this. Tell me about your job. Why are you working? Well, I kind of have to. You know how it is. Just, just working. Ask her, 10, 20 years from now, do you want to be working down the road? Or are you just working because? The next thing is, is her job slash career a feminine or a masculine role? When I met my girl, she was working. She wasn't doing something masculine. She was uh, nannying. She was taking care of little kids and babies. 
She works now as, a, as an English teacher for a little bit, right? Taking care of little kids. She works with children. So feminine women, if they're intelligent, they are going to work a job that brings out their femininity. In a way, it prepares them for marriage. And if you go back 60, 70 years ago, a lot of women historically, before they got married to a husband, they worked in administrative roles as a secretary, as a nurse, as a veterinarian, as a, little, as a teacher, as a nurse, as a nanny. They would do supportive, nurturing roles where their feminine traits that are God given to them actually come out to play and they exercise them and they get experience and skill, which is then going to help them when they nurture a husband and children on their own. So when, when they did get married, they stayed home and they were taken care of by the husband. So your girl or the girl you meet when you're dating her, when you first meet her, ask her that question. Tell me about your job. Does it make you feminine? Is it preparing you for marriage? Because if she's working with children or animals or in a supportive role or it's not too stressful, that's a good thing. This only becomes a problem, and this is what you're going to see as a pattern with the career-oriented women, is that the job or career they choose is always going to put them in a masculine role, a leadership role. They're in a managerial role. They're in a role where they have a very large responsibility over other people. They're in a role where they have to take risk or they have to make very firm, harsh decisions in a business. Roles that are very calculated, very strategic and engineerial. Any woman doing a masculine job, it's going to ruin her. But if you're a Christian guy and you're going to get rid of a girl because she's a hairdresser at the local nail salon, she does girls' nails. I mean, come on, that's a sweet thing. That's what girls do. You're going to cut her off because of that. It's a problem. It becomes a problem when the girl wants to be a, a lawyer or a judge or something really masculine, like I'm going to be a police officer, like she's in the armed forces or something like a man would do. Yeah, she tells you she's in sales. Like sales is a very masculine thing. I cut, cut the cord wherever you want. So that's when it becomes a problem. And when you deal with those women, it's a waste of time. So look at her life choices. Because when you meet her, you get a snapshot of who she is and what she values now. And if she's not intelligent enough to choose a job or something that's keeping her feminine, she ain't that smart. That's the second thing. So if she's doing something feminine, it's not a bad thing, gentlemen. And that girl's going to be far more receptive to probably wanting to be a wife and a mother. It's usually the very masculine ones that don't. And third, thirdly, ask her when you start vetting her, hey, if you were to get married, and would you live within the husband's means? Would you happily stay at home and raise the kids and support your husband in his career or business? If she says, no, I want to do my own thing, well, that right there is a house that will be divided. Because when you marry, you become one flesh. You do everything together. The husband isn't working for himself. The husband's working for his wife and kids. The woman isn't taking care of the home for herself. It's for the husband and the kids. You love each other. You sp you're giving to each other. You're fulfilling each other's role. Man's the head of the home. Woman is the heart of the home. And these are things that I would at least have that one conversation when you meet the girl. Explain your values because you don't want surprises later on. This is where I stand on. This is what I want. Tell the woman, I'm willing to work hard so that you can live within my means. Is that something you'd be willing to do? And if she says, no, I want to do my own thing, then walk away. Find a woman who dates to marry. And she wants to find a good man that's going to take care of her. And remember, gentlemen, if anything, it would be a red flag if when you meet her, she has no work. She doesn't do anything. Because then it's like you don't want a leech. You don't want a woman who, I want a traditional man, but she's not going to be a traditional woman. You want to see a woman have, have some type of diligence. Does she cook? Does she clean? Does she do laundry? Does she know how to take care of kids? Does she know how to take care of animals? Does she take care of the loved ones in the family? Look at those things. Because managing a home is work. Some people estimate that a woman managing a home full time, being a stay at home mom with two, three kids, it's the equivalent of paying her like six figures. So in the value, it's going to it's worth a lot. And if you're a traditional man, you will value and appreciate a feminine woman who does her role. Likewise for the woman. So if you're with a feminine woman, guys, address this stuff when you meet her. So for my client to answer your question if you're talking to girls and you don't know how to explain why a career is going to make them unhappy, you're probably talking to women that are doing masculine roles. So I would simply tell them, if you're doing a masculine role, it's going to ruin your, your monthly cycle. It's going to damage your hormones. It's going to make you more masculine. It's going to make you put walls up. You're going to be more difficult to be around. And tell her, because a lot of women are not told this from a man's perspective. 
Tell her, as a man, I don't want to date a mini man. I want a feminine woman, a soft woman, a nurturing woman. I don't want to be with a woman who's masculine, who's competitive to other women, who wants to scale her career and run something like she's, she's some type of boss babe. That's a masculine thing. That is not feminine and it is a turn off. In the same way to a woman, it's unattractive if a guy has no drive or ambition because he's effeminate and weak. But it's attractive when a man takes risk and he's confident and he gets it done. He slays the dragon. That's why it's so attractive to a woman when a guy has those traits. So I would explain that to her just like that. To me, it's a turn off if you have masculine qualities. A lot of women, because, and explain to her, because of feminism, women are taught to be masculine. And tell her, that doesn't work with me, sweetheart. I want a feminine woman, and if you want to win me over, you win me over with your feminine qualities. Not with your masculine traits. I don't want a woman to have any masculinity in her. Say it to her like that. And that's what I, those, those are the three key points I would, I would look at. Is she just working to survive? If the answer is yes, okay. Is her job or something feminine? Perfect. Is she choosing career over family? If the answer is no, and she knows that marriage and husband is more important than her job, and she'll let that go when you make good money and you'll live within your means, perfect. Is she willing to grow with you now when you're young and building your career or business as a young man? If you're For the young guys in their 20s, great. If you're already more established, you're an older man, 30s or 40s, and you do well for yourself, well, obviously you're already established, so that goes, out of the, that goes without saying, right? If you're already making good money and you could take care of her and she still wants to go off do her own thing, I'd question how much she likes you. Because a lot of women, if they have a man who makes good money and they still want to work, it's an exit plan. Keep enough money because you can't trust men just in case he does you wrong. In which case they probably didn't vet each other properly. But for you single guys, especially for my client who's looking for a woman, this is, this is how I would approach it. You want a woman who has some worth, work ethic. It's not a bad thing if she's doing her nail job or she's working with animals or kids or local coffee shop at the library. She's a secretary at the gym or she does something feminine. Man, that's, that's perfectly fine. That's fine. As long as when you get married, she's willing to do her role. Because if she's traditional and she expects you to do your role, you, she has to also do hers, right? So if, and if the woman is career oriented and very masculine, I'm independent, da, 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 explain it to her once. Say, look, this is why it's unattractive. This is how it's going to damage you. And this is how it will cause friction in a relationship. And remember, subconsciously, women don't crave equality. They crave hierarchy. Women always crave a man, a dominant masculine guy they look up to and respect. Women, that's why women don't even go for younger men because they see them as little brothers, little boys. The only sort of woman that goes for younger men are women that are masculine and step on men. And the only sort of guys that go for older women are guys that have mummy issues and they ain't masculine. And that's, and that's life. There's exceptions, but that's really the standard. So again, those are the three things I'd consider. And then when you meet the girl, tell her that. Because it's like if she has a traditional lifestyle, but she's denying it because others say it's weird or then she don't, probably doesn't, isn't truly traditional. And there's no excuse. Oh, the girl's young. She doesn't know what she's doing. I met my girl when she was young, 19 years old. The first thing she said to me was, I date to marry. I was like, damn, all right. So do I. Her entire family, her grandparents, her dad, her mum, they all told her, get a career, go study a law degree, be very masked. And she's like, no, because she knew it would ruin her femininity. Instead, she chose to nanny children, study children's psychology because she loves children which is going to help her when we have kids because she knows so much about children and their development. Um, she, she prefers womanly interest. She cooks, she bakes, she cleans. She does all the laundry. I mean, she takes good care of me. But she works with little kids because she loves children, because she's a feminine woman. She chose to do something feminine. And when we get married, she's going to leave that behind, right? Sorry, like after when we have kids, I should say, then she'll leave that behind. So... I'm using that as an example for you guys. So if you find a young girl who has strong values, who has strong traditional values, she will follow through with that because it's who she is. And I didn't have to fix my girl or change her. It's just simply who she is. End of story. So as a solution, at the end of the day, if you are the right man for her and she really has traditional values, then she will see you as the man she can marry and bear children for. 
If she's not, she'll make excuses. You can only lead a woman out of feminism if there's enough humility and she's come to the realisation herself that feminism is not working for her. As my mentor taught me years ago, people only change their values or their belief system when they get to a point where they realise it's not working for them. Have you ever been working on a solution and you do the same thing over and over again and it doesn't work? And you have that moment where you're like, whoa, I'm doing the wrong thing, time to change. And you adapt and you fix it. Okay? Because ultimately, your belief system is tied to your identity. That's how it works. And if this girl is very career-oriented or for you guys that deal with the very career-oriented women, that's going to be a problem you're going to run into. But understand that a lot of girls, maybe if they have a lower self-esteem, they might submit and do what their family says and go to college, get the degree, do what, to keep the peace in the family. But when they meet Mr. Handsome, the guy they love, the guy they crave, and he's dominant and he leads, and like you explained to her, hey, I know there's bad men out there, but there's good ones. And I'm going to honour my woman, I'm going to take care of her, I'm going to lead her, protect, provide for her, and I expect you to do the nurturing thing. If you were to get married to me down the road, would you leave the career or job behind and do your biblical role? If she truly is traditional, she's going to give you that yes. If she's not, maybe no, I'll see, I'll think about it, I'm not sure. To which point, risking your time with that, it's not worth it. Because it's the flip of a coin. And I don't teach flip of the coin. I teach you to have 100% clarity of what sort of woman you're getting involved with. So there's no surprises three years into your marriage that she suddenly wants to do things differently. You establish these things, you establish your boundaries and your values from the get-go. Not the day before the wedding night, or not the week after on the honeymoon, as most people do. Not, or not when you have two, three kids, right? And again, the settling thing is really important, because that same girl that could be a feminist and career-oriented with you, man, you put her around a guy she really wants, and watch all that feminism go right out the window. You have to think about that too. So if you're finding girls that are very career oriented and they don't, ooh, they don't want to follow your lead. You know, women have a duty to follow your lead. And if you're doing everything right as a man, and there's no reason why she shouldn't, unless she's dealing with the sin of pride and feminism, the sin of pride, sin of rebellion, it's a big one. I can even give you a story of myself. I used to be vegan years back from 2017 through September of 2019, about two years, more or less, I was vegan, year and a half, two years. And when I was vegan, I remember I was passionate about it. I was telling my family, my friends, my ex at the time, I was convincing everybody why veganism was the thing. But meanwhile, I was losing 15, 20 pounds of weight. I couldn't put muscle on anymore. My libido wasn't working, my body wasn't working. My hair was thinning, my, my skin went down. I mean, I had huge underbags under my eyes. I looked like a drug addict, even though I don't drink or smoke. People would say to me, you look really sick, you look really thin, are you okay? This veganism isn't working. And I was prideful. And I was fighting back at everybody, you know, sending them videos of how they killed the animals because go save the planet. And I was so prideful, I wasn't looking into the health benefits until I got to the point where I realized my body is just not working. I'm literally dying. My muscles are eating itself. I'm, I'm, I'm literally shutting down. I'm going to die. And when I started eating animal fats again, animal-based products, and I just my health got better, the only reason I made that change wasn't because my family and friends told me to, or tried to convince me or talked me out of veganism. They tried. The only thing that got me out of veganism was me ruining my own health because of my own choice. And once I came to the conclusion that my own belief system, veganism, wasn't working, I stopped, I changed, I humbled myself, I fixed my, my nutrition, I got my health back, I went to every single family member and friend who I shoved down their throats and I apologised to them all individually and I've never gone back to veganism. It's really that simple. And it's the same thing with feminism. You can't really change her if she's, that, if she's really that serious into it and you shouldn't want to. People change in their own time. And with anything, People only change when they hit that wall and they go, this ain't working for me anymore. Happened to me. And there's look, there's many stories of women that are feminists and they turn it around after 10 years of a fucked up marriage with their husband and now they're super feminine. 
I think my, my signal cut off there, but we continue recording. So there's definitely girls that, at a, even at a young age, they, they were a little bit feminist and then they turned from it. And now they, they become very feminine women and they really value their biblical gender roles because they've come to Christ, they've come to God, they've humbled themselves. But at the state they were in before when they were feminist, no good man wants that. Now they've changed, now they're ready and that's perfect. But there's always a toss of the coin. How long is that going to be? And I know for my specific client, he's in his early 20s. He wants to find a woman who wants to have five, six, seven children with him. He wants to have a big family. He comes from a big family. And for him, he wants to be married young, ideally within the next year or two. So he can't afford to waste time with a woman who's older, who wants to have kids in her 30s. If he wants to have seven healthy children, she needs to be starting ASAP. So he needs to find himself a young woman. And if you're in the same boat, you're one of those guys, that's what you want. You've got no time to waste. And you can't be wasting your time with a career-oriented woman, even if she changes or not. I remember my ex going back years back. She came from a good home, but the parents were feminist. Well, most men are feminist nowadays because they like, they reject Christ. And these godless men follow the cultural Marxism, the feminism. And I see this with a lot of fathers that only have daughters. They raise them to be boys, especially when they're godless. And he raised my, 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 my ex and the sister to both be very masculine because he didn't have sons. Teaching them everything about finances, about money. It had to be like very, and he really pushed them to be very competitive, very masculine. And they were, she was, and hence back then I was vegan, so I was very weak and effeminate, and no wonder I was involved. But every time I would mention, because I still wanted marriage and kids, hey, I want to be married, I want to have a family, she would always say, no, 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 I want this, I want that, I want a career, I don't want kids. And it's such a red flag when a woman doesn't want motherhood. I mean, that should be the biggest red flag of all. What sort of feminine woman does not want to hold her own baby in her arms with a, that she created with a man she loves? That should be every woman's dream. So if a woman doesn't want that, either you're not the right guy for her or there's something wrong with her. And in my case, my ex definitely settled for me. I wasn't the right guy for her. She didn't want that for me. You know, and I kept trying to change her mind and I walked away eventually like it wasn't worth it. Now it's a different story. I have a great woman in my life. We want the same things. It's peaceful. I've never had to change or fix her. It's peaceful. It's just effortless, man. And that's what I want for you guys. And this going, let me fix the career oriented woman. It's a waste of time. You, the reality, you shouldn't have to even convince the woman why it's going to make her unhappy. She should be bloody well smart enough to know. But I understand there are exceptions when you do want to have that conversation because you really like the girl. So you have that one conversation and it's all the stuff I've covered so far in the video. This is what you ask her. The, these questions. and You gauge it, then you see where she stands. Because some women definitely have the fear. I can't trust men. There's bad men out there. You know, with five kids at a young age, things are expensive. How am I going to take care of it? So you discuss it. Look, if I make good money, could you live, are you happy to live within my means? If she says yes, great. Talk about it. Have the conversation. And remember, there has to be enough humility for her to even come to that realization in the first place. And... Quite frankly, guys, most women aren't feminist. But if you, if you keep coming across them, then you might just be in bad luck in the sense that the numbers that you're dealing with or the you might have only interacted with bad ones so far. Keep going until you actually find a woman who doesn't have a lot of these problems. And don't be fooled. If she tells you, yeah, I want a traditional lifestyle, but she doesn't actually show that with her actions, then she doesn't want it. And if she truly wanted a traditional lifestyle, but maybe her family's very strong and they push her down, then it, because you are a man that she desires, you will naturally bring that desire out of her. You will naturally, that want to have a family will come out because of you. As I've been saying so far in the video, the stories of girls who were always very tough, very feminist, very rough and tumble, I don't need a man. The second they get with a guy that they fucking want, damn, they're like, Oh my gosh, I want to have his babies. I keep thinking about having a family with him. I can't wait to live with him. And oh, I want to be his. And they become very feminine. So if that you're not seeing that reaction from these women, they're not for you. Keep moving. So that's how I would handle it. That's how I would handle the, you know, the, you know, it's, it's wrong that women, some women don't want marriage 
we don't want children from a young age but a lot of that you can solve that by you being the right guy if you're the right guy for her if you are she'll want kids with you when she meets you at a young age okay i mean 90 percent of women's eggs are gone when they get into their mid-30s so you can explain that to them can women still have kids in an older age if they take care of their health absolutely but it's not optimal and even today there's young women who even though ideally it's better for them to have kids because their health is so messed up they need probably a few years to recover from their birth pills birth control pills or their damaged health the only advantage when you're young is you have time and when you have time and you especially when you want a, a big family having kids at a younger age no matter what is still the better option because if you do take care of your health and you live a long life and your children have a young kids at a young age you'll have a big family you get to see them all wonderful but the older you are there's less time so you want a woman who's smart enough to value her fertility value her youth and she understands that family is more important than career because you want a, a mother to your children that is going to dedicate herself to them and to you as the husband right so that's my answer to that moving on to the next question he asks me how do you deal with relatives or sisters of a partner who are feminist and make feminist comments how do you let them see feminism is not going to make them happy pretty simple i listed here a few questions i recommend covering because when you deal with friends uh, family close loved ones you have a different perspective with this topic because you can give them more time you're not dating them you're not marrying them this is just family you know you love them you want the best for them most people take a long time to change anyways but how would you let them know that feminism is not going to make them happy these are a few questions i would cover question number one do you think there are aspects of feminism that might create unrealistic expectations or pressures on women. How do you handle those pressures? Because what you want to do is ask them questions so that they come to their own conclusions. Nobody likes to have anything forced down their throats. When I was vegan and I forced it down my family's throat, they didn't like that. And people hate unsolicited advice. What the whole point here is you ask a few questions that are thought provoking getting them to reassess their values and you plant seeds and then in time they can come back dialogue with you and maybe realize you are right it's like when i have my clients or customers sometimes they'll send me an email i have guys from years back messaging me oh i'm with the wrong woman i give them advice what to do they don't listen i get an email hey christian you were right what you told me three years ago about the wrong chick i should wait a ruined years with her whatever i've uh, if i had a if I had a nickel for every guy that sent me an email like that yeah <laughs> so you get what I'm saying you just have to give people time to humble themselves especially with family but this would be the first question do you think there are any aspects of feminism that might create unrealistic expectations or pressures on women because a lot of women now feel burnt out they have to do everything right how do you handle those pressures why this question invites them to consider whether certain feminist ideals might lead to stress or burnout and how they cope with that let them talk let them let the women in your family really talk think on it i'll give you an answer question number two in what ways do you think traditional roles or values might still have relevance in or values today or what's valuable today this question opened the doors to discuss the benefits of traditional roles of men and women because you want to bring it back to that ultimately because if they're feminists they're going to say oh but women can't do this but the man has to always do this blah 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 and ask them well how is that working for you how has your how has your life changed is feminism made you happy if we live in a feminist worldview or feminist world in the west then should any gender roles be traditional should the man have to pay on the first date should the man ever have to pay i mean if the woman could work and do her own thing should a man do that a lot of feminists want the benefit of having a traditional man without being a traditional woman and that's why this thing collapses on its own but ask this question to your family see see what they are see what answer they give you start a dialogue because 
You want them to talk. You want them to come to that conclusion. These questions are soft to moderate. I'm a bit of an extremist, so some of you might consider this very strict. But to my standard, I think this is quite soft and moderate. It's enough to get them thinking without shutting them down. And you can come back and reignite a conversation down the road. So that's the second question, right? What, what do you think about traditional values? And do they still have any relevance today? Let them analyze. Question number three. If feminism is so beneficial to Western society, can you explain to me why divorce rates are so high? Since everybody's operating under a feminist frame, right? Why are broken homes more prevalent? Why is single motherhood skyrocketing? Why is promiscuity and infidelity becoming more common than loyalty in marriage? Do you think the sexual liberation movement or feminism of the 1960s has a role to play in all of this? The reason why you want to ask this one is because if you look at that movement and you do your origin, your research into feminism is they promoted sleeping around, the contraceptive pills so women could sleep who they wanted and have a consequence free sex and it actually benefited promiscuous men and women and it just became a trad, a fad. How has this helped everyone? The reason why you, this question is a bit more harsh to moderate is because this is going to get them to reflect on the society and to look at the relational situation between men and women across the board in all Western countries, the US, UK, Canada, uh, all the countries in Western Europe that have feminism pumped into them or have had it pumped into them for the last 50, 60, 70 years. So it's so they can put two and two together and go, yeah, this actually does tie to feminism. Because you look at the culture, feminism has poisoned the culture. Look at the entertainment industry, the media, the music. The men are portrayed as weak and effeminate, the women as masculine. But even then, the feminist women want a masculine guy and the effeminate men deep down want a masculine woman. What's going on? Why is it all mixed? My, why, why men and women suddenly mad at each other? Why is, is there more failed relationships than ever before, even though people have the freedom to choose? Ask your family this question. See what answers they give you to any of that. Because the women are empowered now, so why are there more single mums? Why are there more broken homes if they're so empowered? Can't they choose better men? Hey, what's going on? Can you give me an answer for that? See what they tell you. Ask them. And the finally, if feminism has done nothing but improve the lives of women, why are women statistically unhappier than ever before? This is proven. There's medical journals on this. Feminism, I mean, when you really look at this, the entire generation of women that have followed it have become mini versions of men. They have torn away at their own femininity. And they become the unhappiest generation of women to ever live. They're highly medicated. They're miserable. And quite frankly, a lot of these women are desperate for a change. And I want your family to really sit there and think on it. Even for you guys, the viewers watching, ask, other, ask people you know. Really, if you look at the stats, even men, men, you could say men are unhappy than ever before too, but this is strictly for the women in the topic. If feminism has done so much good to women, then why are they unhappy? Why are they medicated? Why are they sick and unhealthy? Why are they miserable? Why are they lonely? Why are they depressed? Why are they finding it hard to find a good man? Why can't they seem to keep a good man? Why do they keep, seem to keep attracting weak, effeminate men? Why do they ha have bitterness towards men? Why do they hate men? Why are they afraid of men? Why are they too afraid to walk down the street at night? What's happened to society, right? Mass migration, question mark. So liberalism, LG, like the leftism, all this feminist poison, all this crap. If everything's so good in society, why, why are women so miserable? Isn't that what they wanted? Ask that to your family and see what answers they give you. And the solution here is... Again, with relatives, it's to engage in dialogue, ask them questions, planting the seeds of truth with hope that in time they'll turn from their sin. I also highly recommend encouraging them to do their own research into the origins of feminism and the end goal of feminism, which is to destroy the family. But saying that to them outright in a conversation, they're just going to think you're a conspiracy theorist and shut you down. I would start with these questions to get them to think. And then you can go deeper. Hey, once they're more receptive to learning more, they ask you more, then you can say, do you know where feminism comes from? Have you done your research? Do you know the origin? Do you know why, how many people communism killed? And they're like, yeah, it killed millions of people. Yeah. Well, do you know what cultural Marxism is? 
Do you know what subversive ideologies are? That's what feminism is. It's a Trojan horse that was put into the ideology of the West, in the education system, in the culture, in the media, to confuse and demoralize men and women. Because if there's weak, fat households where women are in rebellion and men are headless chickens, who's in control? The elite. Can't say too much on that. For not, I, want, I don't want my video taken down. But again, these are basic things that I think you can ask to deal with feminist family members. And this is going to make them think, well, yeah, feminism really can't be making me happy if the society is going to crap. Because the health of, a, of the relationships of society as a whole and of people's health and everything else, that gives you like a CT scan of the current state of the psyche of the men and women that make up the society. And if men and women are miserable, if divorce rates are high, if marriages are broken, and feminism gave women a choice to choose, then, then clearly it's not working. Something's not right. They're lacking righteousness. And obviously it goes without saying, if you're a feminist, you're anti-God, you're anti-family. Pick up your Bible and get right with the Lord. So with that said, I hope this video helped. It was a great request from my client. If you guys have any more topic requests, link them down below in the comment section. Again, if you'd like to stay in touch with me personally, I highly recommend you sign up to my relationship community where you can ask me more questions, check out all the different courses I've made, hop in on the group calls and have, have a chat with me personally and stay in touch. I'll see you all in the next one. God bless all of you and your families.